Now that we've discussed the concept of composing functions in modern Java and talked about some of the features that are supported this. Now that we've talked about the concept of comp. Now that we've discussed the concept of composing functions in modern Java and looked at some modern Java functional programming features that support function composition, it's time to turn our attention to a case study, case study EX1. This case study generates and checks count positive odd random numbers and prints which are prime and which aren't. You can get the source code for this example in open source form available at the link at the bottom of this slide. We're now in my IntelliJ project for case study EX1. This example uses the Java Streams framework to compose a pipeline of functions that generate and check S max count positive odd random numbers and then print which are prime and which aren't. This example also shows how to use the Java record type to store immutable data fields. We'll begin our walkthrough by taking a quick look at the one and only field called S max count, which is a static final int initialized to 20, which is the number of positive odd random numbers to check for primality. The main entry point into this program simply calls the check for primes method, passing in S max count. Check for primes in turn generates and checks count positive odd random numbers and prints which of them are prime and which ones aren't, count being the number of positive odd random numbers to generate and check. We do this by using a Java sequential stream, beginning by creating an instance of the random class. We create this anonymous instance and then use the ints factory method defined on random to generate an infinite stream of random positive integers within the range one to integer max value, which is quite a large value, as you can imagine. We then use the Java streams intermediate operation filter to weed out any even numbers, because of course they couldn't possibly be prime. We do this by passing in the is odd method reference, which is defined here. Is odd is a method that returns true if the integer parameter is an odd number, otherwise it returns false. And it determines this by using the bitwise AND operator to AND the integer with the bitwise value of 1. If that returns the value 1, then we know that was an odd number. But if it doesn't return the value 1, we know it was not an odd number. It was an even number. What comes out of filter, of course, will be a stream of values that are only the odd values, only the odd numbers. We then go ahead and call the map to obj intermediate operation, passing in the check if prime method reference. And we're going to do this to see whether or not these odd numbers are prime. So let's go ahead and take a look at what check if prime does. Check if prime is a method that checks to see if the prime candidate parameter is prime or not. It returns something called a prime result, which is a record that contains the original prime candidate and either the value zero if it was indeed prime or the smallest factor if it's not prime. Let's go take a look at prime result before we look at the implementation of check if prime. So prime result is something called a Java record, which is a relatively new feature in Java that is designed to hold plain old data or pods, in this case containing the result of a primality check. Unlike a traditional Java object, a Java record contains no hidden fields. It has no virtual pointer or v pointer. It can have therefore no virtual methods. It has no intrinsic lock. It has no intrinsic condition, etc. It just contains the fields. And the two fields we care about for prime result are prime candidate, which is the value we're evaluating for primality, which of course is going to be odd, and something called the smallest factor, which results from calling the is prime method on the prime candidate. And in this case, zero indicates it was prime, and a positive number indicates the smallest factor if it was not prime. So check if prime simply makes a new prime result record instance, passing in prime candidate as the first field, and as the second field, the results of calling the is prime method on the prime candidate. Here is the implementation of the is prime method. This method determines whether the prime candidate parameter is prime or not. It does this with several steps. The first thing it does is it checks to see whether prime candidate is a multiple of two. If it is, it couldn't possibly be prime. So we do this check by modding the prime candidate parameter by two. If we get back a zero, that means that it was, in fact, an even number. 
and therefore we return the value two. If we don't get that, then we go ahead and do the actual loop. So we're gonna check certain values for primality by using a somewhat clever algorithm. This algorithm starts by initializing a loop counter called factor to the value three. And you'll notice that we always skip over even numbers when we go ahead and update factor after we've checked the loop condition. So for example, we always add two values to the factor to make sure that we're dealing only with odd numbers. We keep looping in the for loop until multiplying factor by itself becomes greater than the prime candidate. So as long as factor times factor is less than or equal to prime, we continue on in the loop. The body of the loop checks to see whether modding the prime candidate by the current factor leads to a result of zero. If it does, that means that the prime candidate was not prime because it was the product of two smaller natural numbers. In that case, we return the factor, which is the smallest factor as you can see here. Otherwise, if we make it through the entire loop without returning the factor, then that means the prime candidate was prime, so we return zero. So what comes out of map to obj will be a stream of prime result values. We then apply the limit intermediate operation, which is a so-called short circuiting operation, which will limit the stream to considering only count odd numbers. So after we've hit count, which in this case is 20, that means we're going to terminate the stream and nothing more will be considered in that overall infinite range that was generated by the ints method from random. The final operation in this stream is going to be the for each terminal operation, which does two things. It initiates all the intermediate operations and it will also take the results and print them out as they come through. For each is an interesting example because it actually supports side effects intentionally. And the side effect here is to call the print result method. And you can see that the print result method will print the result. And what it's going to do is it's going to check to see whether or not the smallest factor was not equal to zero, meaning that it was not prime, in which case we print the prime candidate being not prime with its smallest factor. Or if it was prime, we just print the fact that that number, the prime candidate was prime. So now that we've seen how the program is designed, let's go ahead and compile and run it. Here it is running in my IntelliJ project. As you can see, it generates 20 values that are random and rather large in this case. And some of them are prime. In this particular case, just one of them was prime. And the other ones were not prime and it prints out the smallest factor of those numbers. And if we run this thing multiple times, we'll see that sometimes we get no prime numbers at all. Other times we get a bunch of prime numbers because of course, in this case, we're using the random number generator to generate these random numbers. So we don't know what we're gonna get until we actually call it and see what the values are. So that's the end of our walkthrough of case study EX1, which demonstrated how to compose functions in modern Java.